This camera setup is absolutely insane. Like one, two, three, four. Are there more? <laughs> hey friends, welcome back to the vlog. Today's gonna be a fun day. So we're heading down to London, to Shoreditch, to Stephen Bartlett's studios to record an episode of his podcast, The Diary of a CEO. This feels really scary, to be honest, because the sorts of guests that he has on are like ridiculously high caliber and like high end. I am not. <laughs> and so it's like, uh, I really, I have, the, I have this like in big imposter syndrome type stuff that's been in my head for the last like couple of days since we found out about this interview. I'm trying to do my, a lot of prep for it, uh, re-listening to his audiobook, which is really good by the way. It's called Happy Sexy Millionaire, which is an interesting clickbaity kind of title, but it's genuinely absolutely sick. We were listening to it in the car yesterday and there were so many bits where uh, me, Angus and John were like, whoa, this is really good. Anyway, that interview is starting at 1 p.m. So we're about to take the train down from Cambridge to London and apparently they're going to send us a car. It should be interesting, but I'm also a little bit scared. All right, cool. So we're, we're on the train, got the iPad busted out, and I am doing some prep for this interview, i.e. rereading, rereading the book, going through like the chapters, figuring out, okay, what are the main points he's talking about? Because as I was listening to the book, I found that a lot of the stuff that Steve talks about is very similar to the stuff that I've talked about on the YouTube channel, but he approaches it from a kind of entrepreneur, CEO perspective, whereas I approach it from like a YouTuber creator type perspective. Just trying to familiarize myself with his stuff as much as I can before going into this interview. Because what I'd ideally like it to be is not so much a, an interview about me, but I'd like it to be more of a conversation. Um, probably this is a big part of the imposter syndrome speaking where I'm like, I feel that his insight on all of these things is gonna be more valuable than mine. And so if we can turn it into more of a two-way dialogue, I'm hoping that'll uh, help me feel less as if um, that I'm not, I'm not providing enough value because that's the thing that I'm like super, super concerned about with, with this sort of stuff. All right, so we're in the car en route to uh, our friend Steve's studio in Shoreditch. Feeling pretty nervous, pretty nervous about it, not gonna lie. Trying not to think about it, but also trying to kind of convince myself that actually it's just it's just gonna be a friendly chat and I don't need to like overthink it or worry about like performing because I feel like with this sort of stuff the more you're in your head about it the less well you come across. Alright here we are. This camera setup is absolutely insane. Like one, two, three, four. Are there more? <laughs> Sliders, cinema cameras fancy ass lenses. We, we were thinking we were, we were gonna go super high end with our podcast and have like three angles, maybe one on a slider. And then just coming here, it's like bloody hell. <laughs> Wrapped up shooting. Thank you very much for having me Thanks on. Thanks for having me. Absolute uh, pleasure. My pleasure. Um, we're talking a little bit about imposter syndrome in this. We kind of talked in the podcast about um, at least my feelings of imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. I wonder how, how do you deal with it? Because you're like you know 28 years old, very successful, youngest mm. ever dragon on Dragon's Den. Mm. You must deal with imposter syndrome a fair bit. Yeah, I've really I've always been curious about this idea of imposter syndrome because I've I'd never really um, I, I thought I'd never felt it, mm. and then I realised that. As is the case with like pre-stage nerves when you go on stage and speak in front of 9,000 people, we actually probably all feel something very similar. And then our perspective, what we tell ourselves that feeling is, which comes from our biases and insecurities and fears, um, changes the word. So yeah. for me, before I go up on stage, I feel something in my chest. Yeah. I feel this, you know, this like butterfly, -y, like I feel the adrenaline coming through my body. And I tell myself that I'm ready and I'm excited and that is normal and that is okay. Yeah. And, and a lot of people will feel that thing in their chest and they'll tell themselves that they are nervous. 
and the nerves come from their lack of preparation and that they're going to fail and what if you, and they and so they feel the same thing but then they tell themselves a story about the feeling the same applies for imposter syndrome in my life when i find myself in situations that are clearly outside of my depth i've never been on dragon's den before i've never been a dragon i'm sat next to peter jones who's been there for 17 years deborah who's been there for 15 odd years um clearly i'm not um uh, i have no experience here however i tell myself that that's how my life is supposed to be. I'm supposed to be outside of my depth. I'm supposed to feel uncomfortable. It's supposed to be a challenge. I know deep inside of me that for pretty much everybody who is striving forwards, they will live their entire life, one, and they should live their entire life, just that one step outside of their zone of comfort. So, uh, so for me, I go, yeah, like I'm in this massive room of investors or I'm, in, I'm on this stage in Barcelona. There's 9,000 people waiting through that tunnel for me to come out or I'm sat on Dragon's Den and the first pitch is about to walk through the doors and all these cameras. And I go to, and that, that voice comes in, it tells me the story of how it goes, you're supposed to be here, bro. You're supposed to be uncomfortable. And you're, and you're gonna be forever. And that is okay. And look at all the other times you were uncomfortable. When you were pitching at 18 years old for this business idea you had, when you were, you know, you first signed your first investment deal, when you first spoke on TV, you've been uncomfortable and out of your depth and somewhere you're not qualified to be forever. Yeah. You're supposed to be there. And that is the path to growth. Those are my growth moments. Discomfort and feeling like, fuck, I don't know what I'm doing. And in fact, that's how everyone's ever grown. Every human that's ever walked the earth, that's made progress, has done it by that one marginal step outside of their zone of comfort. And yeah. Sick. Yeah. Great advice, man. <laughs> Thank you. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've not really thought about that before, but yeah. So, so inspirational. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Right, just wrapped up the interview. I had to change my shirt into this t-shirt because I was sweating so much through it. Um, <laughs> because of the nerves and the lights and everything. But yeah, great conversation. It lasted around two and a half hours. Apparently it was one of the longest interviews they've ever done. Yeah, it was kind of nice because I sort of lost myself in the conversation and wasn't really thinking about the cameras and stuff while it was happening. Um, great chat, love Stephen. Very full of wisdom and insight and like a bunch of other cool things. And I really like that point that Steve said afterwards about imposter syndrome, that actually it's all the same kind of feeling, that feeling of like stuff inside your stomach and you can interpret it as nervousness or as excitement or as anticipation or as imposter syndrome. And I think the story I told myself about it beforehand was that, oh, I'm interpreting this as a nervousness and imposter syndrome. Um, whereas moving forward, I can start changing my interpretation of that to be more a feeling of excitement and anticipation rather than a feeling of like, oh my God, this is gonna be really hard. All right, so we are back in Cambridge. It's been a pretty solid day so far. Or is it? I think it's about half past five. Um, I'm still kind of buzzing from this, from this chat with Steven. It's just like so good. Uh, I can't wait to listen back to it. There's a big part of me that's like, oh, maybe I, maybe I revealed too much. Maybe I was too honest with him. But I think he did a really good job of like actively listening and asking questions. And I feel like, yeah, kind of going in, my aim was to have more of a conversation rather than it being like an interview. And I think it was like a conversation rather than an interview. So yeah, that's out on his channel, on his uh, podcast, Diary of a CEO. Check it out, link in the video description and over here somewhere and subscribe to the podcast. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. See you later.